Hello guys, Shadepiece here, and today I'm showing you what some bad gunnery looks like. It's pretty, pretty bad. This is what my gunnery used to look like. This is very similar and reminiscent of what my gunnery looked like six to eight months ago uh, when I had a lot less experience in flight sims. When, um... I didn't really know the the concepts uh, of gunnery and what uh, would be beneficial for me as far as setting up shots, as far as uh, being more accurate, as far as conserving ammo, and uh, these types of things. And today, that's what I wanna I wanna talk to you guys about is how to go from this spraying and praying and just kind of hoping to kind of being able to set up your shots and have a lot of confidence in your ability to actually hit certain shots and if you're anything like me hopefully you can start looking like this very accurate very pinpoint knowing where your convergence is and how far away you are from your target where to aim your aim point what to aim for on the target these are all sorts of things that we're going to be covering in this video today. Uh, I'm going to try to make a pretty comprehensive tutorial of my approach to gunnery. And I hope by watching, you guys can, can take something away from it. Uh, this tutorial is meant to be for people who are experienced and may be able to uh, maneuver pretty well, but have issues with gunnery, all the way down to people who are brand new and still get overexcited when uh, getting ready to pull the trigger. What I'm hoping is by the end of this video, you guys will have the confidence in yourselves to set up your shots in ways that are going to benefit you and in ways that are going to ensure you have a lot more rounds on target and you have the effect on the target that you're looking for. This is the overview for the video. Here you can see all the different sections of the video that we're going to be talking about today. And additionally, if you wish to skip to a different section of the video because you're rewatching it, uh, you may do so. There will be annotations on all the different sections that will take you to that section. What you see here are two images. The top image is representative of a bullet's trajectory at different ranges and how gravity affects the bullet and pulls the bullets down. The bottom image shows you what that vertical convergence looks like in regards to an aircraft, and also what the horizontal convergence looks like in regards to an aircraft. I'm not going to go too in depth in explaining what convergence is or how it works. There's plenty of videos you can find out there that'll do the, the job much better than I can. But as a general reference, your horizontal convergence is the distance in front of the aircraft where your bullets are going to cross the vertical gun sight post. And your vertical convergence is going to be at the range in front of your aircraft in which the bullets cross the horizontal sight post. So keep that in mind during the following section. Okay, here what I'm going to show you is the exact same pass with the exact same aim point at ideally the exact same range with different convergences so you can see visually the different effects it has on target. That was my personal convergence, what I use. And here you can see the difference based on a very close horizontal convergence. There's drawbacks and advantages to every convergence. Uh, but you just kind of have to feel what's comfortable for you. Here you can see right where the arrow is, the uh, rounds were crossing from either wing. So you can actually see visually where they're crossing because it was so close. And this is what it looks like if uh, you get close enough to utilize that and your convergence is very deadly. Uh, you're going to strike uh, directly into the fuselage with both cannon uh, streams. And that's good. Here's a uh, longer range horizontal convergence. And you can see that's hitting out at the wings, not quite as effective at that range. However, 
a long range horizontal convergence allows you to do shots like this. You'd never be able to do this with the shorter 100 meter convergence because your rounds would cross and be off target by the time they actually made it to the target. So this is one of the advantages of longer range convergence. Really it's just a preference on how far away from your target you tend to be when you fire and what feels comfortable to you. Now this is a lower horizontal convergence and that probably would have missed the aircraft entirely had I actually been aiming correctly and not hit the left stream into the uh, into the radiator section. But it is, it is what it is. You can see how much lower the rounds were compared to the other clips. Now here's a much higher vertical convergence. And they pretty much all go directly over the aircraft if it wasn't for hitting the uh, the rear elevator. Now this is a very interesting clip. What I'm showing you here is rounds are splicing. Now I typically use a 300 meter convergence and this is one of the drawbacks. If you're too close and you're not lined up properly, my both of my cannon streams are going below or above the aircraft. And this is another example of that. This is something you have to watch out for and there's one way to counter it. In order to counter it, what you need to do is you need to hold an offset aim point, which I did not do here, but I will show you here. An offset aim point will let one of your cam cannon streams hit directly into the aircraft while the other one completely misses, but it's what's necessary to get any hits at all. And it can still be pretty effective as you saw there. And finally, in this last clip, I show you my personal convergence again at the range I like it. Both streams right into the wing route. It's pretty damn deadly. Now, I would love to just jump straight into aim points and how to aim and where to aim in front of an aircraft, but that information will do you no good if you can't hold your gun sight there. The number one most critical aspect of gunnery is the ability to keep your aircraft stable with the smallest amount of changing control inputs while you're pulling the trigger as possible. What you need to do is to line your shot up beforehand, hold all of your control surfaces so your gun sight is stable. And once you're in your convergence range and your ideal firing range, you're already set to pull the trigger and there's no last minute adjustments. Too heavy on the rudder or too heavy on your stick in general, right as you're going in for a shot, will ruin any chance you have of having a stable, well-placed burst. In this clip, I'm in a pretty serious maneuver right before I get behind this guy. But you'll notice, even though he's in my gun sight, and my, I'm right there, I'm not pulling the trigger until my gun sight is settled, and I know my aim point is correct. Sometimes you don't have the luxury of lining shots up like this, but when you do, you need to make sure you have the ability and the self-control necessary in order to keep your gun sight stable. See here, I'm holding the gun sight stable as possible and just streaming that long burst into his wing. Just shredding his wing, parts of his fuselage, right in the wing root. And it's all because I was able to hold a very stable elevator and rudder input. Here you can see I'm lining this guy up, very stable gun sight burst right into him. Not very much ammo used, but look how messed up that plane is. Although short, this is probably the most important section of this video. If you are unable to hold your gun sight stable while you're coming in for a shot, you're not going to be an effective gunner. You're going to use far too much ammo and not have nearly the amount of results that you could have if you would just settle down. Once you guys are comfortable and consistent with holding your gun sight stable while you're taking a shot, then you can start looking at 
Where on the aircraft should I be aiming? What sort of aim point should I be holding? The best aim point to hold on pretty much every aircraft is right in the wing route. If you miss either side of your aim point, you'll either be hitting the close side of their wing, usually where their guns and or fuel tanks are located. And if you miss the other way, you'll be hitting directly into the fuselage, right where the engine is, right where the cockpit is, and also the fuselage fuel tanks. The wing route is pretty much always going to be your most effective and biggest point of aim on any aircraft that you come across. It's generally the best aim point to hold and also one of the easier aim points to hold. Let's take a look at some examples. Here we see a Spitfire. This is a Spitfire's water radiator. This is a Spitfire's oil radiator. These are specific weak points on the Spitfire. And you know what they have in common? They're located right in the wing route. Yep, right in the wing route. Same aim point as you would get with anything else. And without having to aim at this tiny little thing, there's a potential that you hit it anyway. Now I typically fly 109s in Cliffs of Dover. But just to demonstrate that th these concepts work in other situations as well, we're going to take a trip to a different game. Welcome to the skies above France in the early 1900s. This is Rise of Flight, a World War I simulator, and I wanted to show you some clips from Rise of Flight just to demonstrate that the same concepts apply in this totally different situation. You can see in these clips I'm flying an Albatross D5, and in some of the later clips it's an Albatross D3, but they're pretty similar. And I'm always shooting at an SE5A. I chose the SE5A as my target in these video clips because the SE5A has a very particularly weak wing route. If you hit the wing route at a pretty s steep deflection angle, you're going to tear the wing off as long as you get a pretty consistent burst. However, in a lot of these clips, I'm not at that really steep deflection angle that you would hope for. So it also demonstrates why the same aim point, even though I can't get full access to the weak spot, is still pretty effective because I am either hitting the engine or the fuel tank or the pilot in some cases. I hope you can begin to see that in a lot of these clips my aim point is pretty much the exact same. It's always just out in front of the, the aircraft. What I'm hoping is that the enemy aircraft will basically fly themselves directly into my stream of bullets. I hold my aim point nice and steady with, a with as we talked about, very little rudder or elevator or aileron input. Just, to, just enough to hold my gun sight just in the right spot. Sometimes you have to work it a little bit with the rudder, but as long as you're very smooth with it and not jerking it around, you're going to be able to just walk your shots in and get it to the aim point that you want. In this last clip, this SE-5A is completely undamaged. And this is just to show you how little it takes in order to take down an aircraft as long as you have the proper aim. Now let's jump back in the 109 and show you the same type of concept. Here I picked out this hurricane and I see that he's breaking left so I'm going to put my nose way out in front of him so that way I can lead him. And then when he hits the aim point that I've chosen, I pull the trigger. Both cannon rounds directly into the left ring and it takes it off and that's all she wrote. Alright guys, in this section, I'm going to talk about conserving ammo. As you can see here, I'm firing only when I know I can hit, as we talked about. And you can see it didn't take very much ammunition to completely destroy that plane. 
Now, if you guys are getting the aim point right and you are exercising control with your inputs when you're pulling the trigger, it's really going to keep you from spending so much ammunition. I used to fire nearly half my cannon ammo to get a kill back in the day. Maybe even more than that. In this clip, you can see that I was a little bit slower than this guy, so I was kind of reaching. But I fired only when I knew my sights were on the target. And you can see in two short bursts, this guy's already streaming. And then I get on a six, I let the gun sight settle, and once I've got it settled, I'm exactly where I wanted it to be, that's when I hammer down. And it doesn't take much. You get that one solid burst, and that plane is out of the fight. This guy, he looked like he was going to pull up and saw him right in front of me. Tiny burst, and you can see he's leaking fuel. His radiators popped and leaking oil. Now, last situation I want to talk about is sometimes you have a really awkward angle and a hard shot, but you're in a really good position to take a shot. And sometimes you just have to use your tracers to walk it in. But at the same time, you still need to be really easy on your control inputs and just slowly walk it in. See, I was missing above him, but I slowly walked the elevator down until I was getting the hits that I wanted. Alright guys, in this last section, I want to talk to you about my personal theory when it comes to gunnery. What I imagine in my head to line up the shots that I make is that the enemy aircraft is on rails, like it's a roller coaster. And then you imagine the track in front of where the car is on the roller coaster and you aim at the track. You want to aim in the flight path where the plane's going to be when the bullets get there. That's why you lead. That's why you have to aim in front of the aircraft. And if you start thinking about where the aircraft is going to be based on the profile of the wings, based on their elevator or aileron input, then you can start to predict where you need to shoot, how you need to adjust your aim point in order to get hits on the aircraft where you want them. Aircraft don't fly straight. They slip through the air, they sometimes are stalling, so you have to have enough experience looking at what it looks like when aircraft do certain maneuvers to understand, okay, this is the aim point I need to hold. And this is how I adjust my aim point here or there. Gunnery is very largely an experience based sit situation. The more you shoot, obviously, the more you'll understand where your rounds are hitting or where they are in relation to your target. I suggest for people who need a little work on their gunnery and who don't totally understand how uh, the bullets are flying in relation to the flight path of the other aircraft that you use tracers use a lot of tracer try to set up your belts uh, to have a lot of tracer and try to watch where your tracers are going and I think that's the best way to uh, start to learn how your bullets interact with the space around your target I still use a lot of tracer even though I think I'm a pretty accomplished gunner I like being able to see and walk in my my shots via via tracers so that's kind of my last little tidbit thanks for watching guys and i'm gonna leave everyone with this final clip and we'll see you in the next one